Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to this Power Move series where we're going to be talking about how to create the 3D geometry for this horn so that you could print out something like this if you were uh, ever needing to do some 3D printing of a shape like this. Or maybe you just want to learn a little bit more about lofting and surfaces uh, in the 3D space. Either way, you're going to learn a lot throughout this series of videos. Now in the last video, what we did was we created our layout rectangle at 200 millimeters by 250 millimeters. We created a second image on the side view and we change the color of the sketches. So now we're going to return to this front view. We're going to begin a new sketch on the front plane and we are going to go to the command tools sketch tools and then all the way down here at the bottom it's actually off of the recording a little it's called sketch picture tools sketch tools sketch picture and this is going to let us browse for one of the images that we talked about in the last video. And once we have that image in place, you can see that we're able to kind of move this around and position it wherever we want. Now, whenever you bring an image into SolidWorks, you're gonna see this option over here on the left. It says enable scale tool. And what that option does is it lets you take this magenta dot here and left mouse button and drag it onto a reference point. And it lets you take this magenta arrow here and left mouse button and drag it onto a reference point. And when you let it go, a dimension appears. So what this dimension is saying is SolidWorks has looked at the image you've brought in and determined that the distance between these two points here is 430 millimeters. What do you want that distance to be? Well, I want that distance to be 250 millimeters and I'm going to press enter and magically SolidWorks resizes that image. Now, this works okay, uh, you know, it's not bad, but for me, in my experience, a lot of times I need to kind of do some fine tuning by just dragging this into place and then grabbing these corners of the image. And you can see that I'm blocked from doing that when the enable scale tool is turned on. So a lot of times, as soon as I bring in an image, I just turn off that option for enable scale tool. And then I just kind of drag it into place. I use this method of uh, creating a layout image more than I use the enable scale tool. So uh, just for what it's worth, you know, it works. Now you know how it works and you also know how to turn it off. So I'm going to bring this image in here. I'm going to uh, size it so that this point down here is right on this line. I'm going to make it a little bit wider. So this point here is on this other line. So we'll just kind of resize this until those two points are, you know, perfectly aligned with my layout. I'll drop the bottom of the helm here on this lower line. And then you can see that the top of the helm is sticking off slightly. And this may be because uh, there's a little bit of distortion, maybe the way the, uh, the illustrator created the image, or if you took a photograph, maybe the photograph is a little distorted. So a lot of times I'll uncheck this lock aspect ratio, and that will let me scale it just in one direction. So you can scale vertical and horizontal independently. Um, it's also nice that I created that center line because I can use that center line to kind of align the nose piece here if that needs to be centered. So if there's some type of geometry that, that has centering geometry, you can align it with that red center line that we created in the last video. So that image looks pretty good to me. I'm going to hit the, the green check mark. And then I'm going to realize, actually, I wanted to adjust one more thing. And so to get back to that picture manager, what you do is you double click. You have to double click here on the image. So we double click on the image. That brings up that picture manager. I'm going to go down here to where it says transparency. And when I go to transparency here, I'm gonna say, I want the transparency to be applied to the full image. So I'm gonna say full image here. And then I'm just gonna drag this slider over to like 30, 40%. So you're just making the entire image transparent, which makes it a little easier to see through the image, see your solid geometry behind the image. And that's something that I always do whenever I bring images into SolidWorks. So I'm done with that sketch. I'm gonna exit that sketch. I'll rename that one image uh, front view. And then I'm going to uh, uh, go to my right side view here. So I guess this is actually the left side view. It's the right horn, but it's the left side view. So now I'm going to go to the right plane, begin a sketch, and I'm going to go tools, sketch tools, sketch picture down here at the very bottom, sketch picture. And then from sketch picture, I'm going to bring in the sketch picture of the helm here from the right side. And it looks like this one's coming in uh, flipped. 
it's the wrong way. So there's an option over here on the left. There's an option for flip horizontally. So I can hit that option, flip horizontally. There we go. That's what we wanted from that helm. And uh, then what I'm going to do is uncheck the option for enable scale tool. I'm going to drag this thing until the height of the helmet matches the height uh, from the uh, from the other image. Again, there may be a little bit of distortion. You know, that distortion might come into play with regards to the extent of the horn. And what I mean by that is when, when it's all said and done here, you might find that the tip of the horn here is a little bit higher or a little bit lower than it was in that other image. So you can see the tip of the horn in this one, the tip of the horn in this one, or or maybe the base of the horn where the base of the horn is connecting to the helmet and the base of the horn here is connecting to the helmet it might be slightly misaligned that's just the nature of working with photos and and you know using photos to kind of drive your geometry usually it's okay especially if you're doing something like a, a cosplay prop you're just trying to get that curvature to look recognizable so usually that's okay there's some situations where you have to be more accurate and then maybe you'd want to use like a 3d scanner or some you know a more accurate tool but for this image, I'm gonna say I want the full image to have transparency. I'm gonna slide that over to about 40%, hit the green check mark, and let's exit that sketch. And there we go. We've got our view here in the front, looking at the helm. We've got our view here from the side, looking at the helm. And we're now gonna be able to set ourselves up to create a projected curve between those two horns. And so if we look back at the completed model, we can see that that was the next step. So first what we did was we brought in these images on the, the front and the right side. And then what we did was we created a 2D sketch here. So a 2D sketch looking at this thing from the front, 2D sketch there going right down through the center of that horn. And then we also created a 2D sketch here looking at this horn from the right side view. And then we were able to project those two sketches together, leaving us with a 3D curve. So we're gonna talk about that in the next video, but I hope that you learned some cool stuff in this video. You learned how to bring images into your SolidWorks model. You learned how to resize them using the scale tool. You learned how to set the image transparency. And of course you learned how to rename these images in the tree. So we should be good to go now to move on to the next steps. If you did learn some cool stuff, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. And of course, be sure to come back for the next episode of Power Moves.